how y'all doing? It has been trying to get this episode done. It's been a, a challenge. Oh man, it's been a challenge. We've been trying to get this thing done for the longest time. All right, so we here. We are here. I'm Anthony Davis, and I'm Alicia Davis, and we are the Common Sense Couple. Yeah. So last week, as a recap, or last episode, we can't say last week because it's been a minute. Last episode, we detailed that we were in foreclosure in our home. And I know some folks been wanting to know the update, like what happened. Mm -hmm. So this is this is the update. This is the update episode. This is what went down. This is what happened. Um, we'll go over the options we considered and all of that. It's been it's still stressful. But as you can see, we we still here. It didn't get sold. <laughs> we still here, you know. It's like I say, it's been tough, but you know, we still rocking. So we decided to, um, we actually, we, we actually were not in agreement at first. No, we wasn't. With what to do or how to handle the situation because we did have different options. Filing chapter 13 and keeping the house was an option um i didn't really want to file chapter 13 i knew we were going to have to file bankruptcy but due to the amount of equity in our home if we had filed chapter 7 they would have sold our home so that was that was a no so it was either going to be you filing chapter 13 restructure the debt and keep our home so we would have to pay you know pay our mortgage payment, pay our bankruptcy payment, and our monthly expenses. I actually was considering selling. I was considering either quickly listing it on the market or selling privately to an investor and just walking away with the cash to start over. Was it scary? Yeah, it was going to be scary because we didn't know where we would go. I just figured we can find somewhere to live. No, it, it wouldn't have five, six bedrooms like we have, like we're used to. But keep that in mind. Keep it in would mind. get the pressure, you know, off of our backs because there are while this is deeply it is personal people think that this is this is too personal maybe to share there's a whole lot more to the story and a whole lot more that we have not shared that we had to take into consideration with each option so moving and just kind of doing a fresh start had we sold it we would have been able to go ahead and find the chapter seven and just you know rebuild and work i i i consider that yeah but my husband was like he didn't think we should no <clears throat> no not i mean i considered it as well because when we do have these discussions i pay attention i'd listen to what you say it's not like you know my way or the highway or nothing like that so yeah i i will listen so we we we've had the discussions. We went back and forth over it. I really wasn't. I, I let me back up. I can't say that I wasn't with it if we was gonna move, but everything had to align itself, which probably wasn't gonna happen most likely. Mm. Considering where we were and what was going on, like we have children, so we can't just up and we would have had to uproot that mm -hmm. the kids, and that was my main concern was. How is this going to affect the children going forward? Also, you got to look at their other parents, the the, the co-parents that, you know, how is this going to impact their life if we have to move and not be in the same spot with the same amount of space or they have to take them uh, for 100% of the time until we get settled? Like, all of those things go into play. All of those things are a factor beyond being comfortable in your home. Mm -hmm. you know so that was huge for me that was huge for me 
just considering where the kids would be, how 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 that dynamic would change. Also, when it came to to selling it, under these circumstances, the options that we considered, the money that we were going to get for the house to move forward, we'd have ran through that. In my in my estimation, because of the economy, even though they say inflation is down, the cost of living is still sky high. The rent, anywhere else we were going to have to go rent, that was going to take a portion of the profits, a huge portion of the profits, and just everyday living. Like, how is that going to change? It would have changed dramatically. So, yeah, I'd like to have a clean start and just walk away and be done with it and everything and all that, too. That would have been perfect if that was the case. But that just wasn't the case of what the numbers we were presented with. It just wasn't happening to me. I was like, I need to know the numbers before we do this. Yeah. Let's sleep on it. Let's get the numbers. Let's see what the attorneys are going to say. And let's see what other options are available. And it just, neither one. The other options just didn't rock. I just wasn't with it. So? I wasn't you with know, it. Um, eventually, you know, I I did come around to not wanting to leave our home because we have a beautiful home and we have space for our family and it's like we can't give this up you know we we put ourselves in this position to to lose it yes but we got to fight for it mm-hmm. like we got to fight for it we got to stay here and i've just had so much more appreciation for the home since we decided to stay you know so we did end up filing chapter 13 restructuring our debts and we've created a budget um we have opened a new savings account um and we have shifted some things to set us up for success you know with our finances because going from a life of using credit for everything which is what we were accustomed to to now you got to go back to to the basics like going back to what i was taught years ago like it 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 doesn't change Mm -hmm. and i don't know what at what point i thought it it you could do it differently but numbers are numbers addition subtraction multiplication (laughs) it is it doesn't change Mm -hmm. so if you spend more than you earn you're going to be at a deficit that's just regardless you using credit cash (laughs) uh payday loans like this is the truth it, it does not change so just now we we gotta stick to a budget yeah. So sticking to that budget, um, saving what we can, like we feel so much more comfortable um, after, you know, making the decision that we made. And it's like we just we're focused, you know, Yeah, it's, focused. it's definitely more of a focus because it, it has to be It's all it, it should have been from the begin, from the outset. But it gets to be too big. At mm-hmm. some point, even before this situation with the house and the foreclosure and all of that, like we were just doing way too much. Everything was it was too much considering the salon space and the rehab of that, the the vehicles on Toro and and doing all of that. Us ourselves um, I have vehicles. We have vehicles on hire car. Then. We were coaching and teaching and having to, you know, just having different obligations all over the place with no structure. Mm -hmm. It leads to burnout and it leads to not really focusing on what's really important. Yeah. So it, it everything just became too much and too big and for us and we didn't uh just stuff that we didn't know, things that we didn't know had come back to to, to bite us. You know, as far as even the forbearance, we were under a forbearance and 
we thought we was just going to start a payment a month. <laughs> Let's just get this month in. And the mortgage company was like, nah, dog, you, you got to pay the past year. You got to pay all of this. We need 20 racks like now. Are you calling to pay the 20? Oh, no, we just got one. It uh, wasn't 20. But. Shit, it damn near. <laughs> it felt like 20. Or however many payments we was behind, it felt like it was a lot. So they was like, you you only, no, nah, you need at least, <laughs> you need about four or five of these, yeah. you know, to, yeah. to make up for that. But no, we didn't have that. So we didn't understand the paperwork. You got to know your paperwork. Of, yeah. You know, if I can stress anything, pay attention to the details. Know what's going on, you know, so. Yeah, but we, um, like, back to how we sit shared that people in our family felt like this was too personal to share, but. And friends, family and friends. Yeah, family and people friends. people close to us, that, people that act genuinely love us. Mm -hmm. I will say that much. Yeah, they they felt like it was too personal. However, there are other people going through this situation, you know, and there are people that don't even, like, people will take advantage of you. Investors, you know, they will they will come off as friendly as they can. And we 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 had been been getting like, you know, text messages and stuff from investors because, you know, a lot of people try to buy your home, wholesale your home, but once that foreclosure notice went out, it was you know, just just over just just a yeah, <laughs> just overkill of hey, this is Brian. I've helped homeowners like you for the past 25 years and they send in pictures and pictures of their family and they just text just messages really, like they know you yeah so are you are you home today hey what's up like <laughs> they come by they will come by your house they will leave notes you know what i mean that can be overwhelming for mm -hmm. other people mm -hmm. but you cannot allow those people or anyone no matter how nice they are to pressure you to make a decision. And that's what we experienced. Yeah. Like with the lady who originally told us about the foreclosure, because we didn't know. Mm -hmm. We did. We had her come over and she I'm she sorry. seemed so cool. You know, she was cool and you know she was doing she her was job. just really <laughs> like, guys, you know, you could really sell this house a hundred thousand percent, somebody will buy it quickly, and you know, just all of this. And it can pressure you, especially at a, a crucial time like that, where we were, like, very close to our home being sold. But I'm glad that my husband was able to kind of think more rationally or think with his head, not, not feeling the pressure of we got to make a decision or, you know, this we might not get this opportunity again. And he's like, no, like we, we need to keep this house. Yeah, That's not even <clears throat> because we would be walking away with less due to the circumstances, you know, or versus had we been in a position to really like list our home, get it market ready right, right. and sell it for what we want, which is ideal. That's what we really wanted to do. So it's like, no, nah, we might as well just keep it, get ourselves in a better position, budget our money, you know, save our money, and we still have our home. Mm -hmm. We still have our home to sell when we're ready or keep it, you know, mm -hmm. whatever the situation is. And I'm I'm just <clears throat> really grateful for that. Uh -huh. Thank I'm really you. grateful for that. Yeah, I had to be. I mean, it was I had to be on an even even kill. You know, don't get too high or too low about any situation because that's the only way you're going to be able to make rational decisions about anything is if you could think critically and clearly about it and remove the emotion from it. So I had to do that. I had to remove the emotion from the moment 
because it was a lot of stress and it builds up physically. You feel it. You feel the pressure. Your back get tight. Your neck gets tight. And like you feel all of that. But I just I just wasn't with it. The numbers didn't make sense to me. And the overall situation didn't make sense. And it was certain things of I paid attention to what this lady said when she came when she came in. Uh, like my wife said, she sat down, everything was all cool at first, but this is just somebody trying to finesse you out of your house. So that's why I say she was doing her job. There's no 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 slight to any of them. They're doing their job. We put ourselves here. But you have to also pay attention to what's being done in the moment, regardless of where you put yourself. Mm -hmm. You still have to be on point. You still have to be on point. So it was a couple things she said because we were looking at houses that were on the market, comps and things like that, online. So we're looking at comps, and I noticed that she said something about the photos of a house that's nearby. And she was like, those are terrible. And it kind of it stuck out to me, like, to be criticizing other, you know, other people. And not to say that it can't happen. It's just certain stuff to me shouldn't be done in a meeting where you're trying to get something accomplished or you know these people are scared and you're making off-color remarks. They may not seem to be a lot to anybody, but it stuck out to me for a reason. Mm. For some reason, that, that, that showed me a character flaw. And then once we got downstairs, we showed her the basement and she took a deep breath like, oh yeah, we're not doing this. You too excited. <laughs> you too excited about my house, man. Let's get this lady up out of here. We ain't doing that. We're going to go to sleep on it and we're going to think about it. Yeah. I was like, we just let a whole wolf in her. That was a wolf in sheep's clothing. She was doing her job as a wolf in sheep's clothing. But we, hey, I read it. I felt it. This ain't the move. This ain't happening. Even with the options that she presented, I was like, I feel icky. I don't feel good about mm -hmm. this. It doesn't feel right, you know? And I've always stated, even from me leaving my job or anything in my life, if I'm going to go out, I'm going to go out on me. I'm going to bet on me before I let something else come in and dictate what I should be doing, what I feel in my gut I know I need to be doing. And I just couldn't let my family be in that situation. I, I we not we not going down that road. We yeah. just we just not we not doing that. And so, yeah, that that went on, and yeah, we had to talk about it, and we prayed on it, and this is how close it was, y'all. Like we we really didn't state how close it was or what else happened. All right, so my wife stated that we. Filed for Chapter 13. You know, we met with the attorneys, the bankruptcy attorneys. We was getting this situated. That was like the last resort. You know, that was the, the to, to stop the sale. We needed to do that. Um, so we were we were notified about the foreclosure. It was October 16th that the the, the house was, was slated to be sold. Mm -hmm. October 16th. The episode that we shot that y'all seen was October 14th. So within those two days, and you can see us on the on the episode, like we, we truly didn't know. We didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know what was going to happen. But I was willing to place that faith in God, that faith in the unknown. And we had a meeting with our attorneys. We had a Zoom meeting. This is how, this is how God works. This is how, this is how crazy it went. We had a Zoom meeting set up with the attorneys. We're on the Zoom meeting. That started at 2 o'clock. Went on from like 2 or 4 to get things, you know, situated and get the case filed to stop the sale, all of that. We get out of the meeting. There's an email from the mortgage company. And we also got a letter a few days after that. But it was a, an email from the mortgage company. The email stated... Well, I'll let you tell it. Give him a call. It said call him. All right. <laughs> give him a call. We called and all right. So we called the mortgage company and, you know, we was just <clears throat> mentioned the email. And they were like, yeah, we're just informing you that we've uh, got your complete application for 
mortgage assistance because we had filled out this application or we had been going through been this process exhausting all options yeah we had mm-hmm. been going through this process mm-hmm. and they never said anything about our home being in foreclosure so she's like so we stopped the sale you know your home's not going and i'm thinking okay <laughs> but the 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 thing is okay i was like we just filed had had we been able to work something out with the mortgage company you know we we don't know now because i mm-hmm. knew once we filed the bankruptcy they i i don't think they would have given us any options we would have had to go with that however had we worked something out like a loan modification or something like that that would have at least you know reduce the amount that we would have had to pay or that we now have to pay in this chapter 13 plan however you know the good thing is that the sale was off and our home did not go to foreclosure so we have to pay it back or you know pay the back pay then we just have to pay the back pay yeah but yeah that's how that went it was the it was the very same day that we filed the case (laughs) <laughs> they were like, "Oh, we stopped the sale, and we're gonna be it's not gonna know, be sold. Give us thirty days to review." So I'm like, "Yeah, they're not gonna, they're not gonna <laughs> review that after they find out about this." But you know, but yeah, like my husband said, so that's that's what happened, and um, so this is this is where we are. We're moving forward with better financial decisions yeah and this probably it was supposed to happen that way Mm. because this whole situation has forced us to tighten up our numbers tighten up our spending tighten up the budget get closer this has brought us closer together Mm -hmm. you know i tell people that all the time like these times are the moments that can either make or break your marriage or your relationship are you two going to be able to stand solid through something adverse as your home going into foreclosure, the money not right, like all of that comes into play. Can y'all withstand that? And that's why we talk about the foundation so much of your marriage, the foundation of your relationship. What have y'all been through? What have you gone through? Because if you haven't gone through much, the sign of first something that's going haywire, somebody's going to split. So you have to know each other first. You have to really be around one another, really get to know this person. Is this Mm -hmm. somebody that I can depend on? Mm -hmm. Can I depend on me to be there for this person? Mm. It's not always about them. Can you depend on you to step up when things ain't going right for you, your marriage, your family, your business, whoever it may be? Can you depend on you? Because if you can't, then your spouse, you, there's no point in blaming them for not showing up when you ain't show up. Right. So these are the times that have really gotten us and brought us closer together. And there's been a lot of other stuff. Like I say, this was a dark moment, and we're still going through it. But we've been through a lot within mm-hmm. these 50, 11 years we've been together. <laughs> we've, been through, we've been through a little something that, that helps guide us. And like we say, we stay close to God, stay close to each other. That keeps us bounded. That keeps us grounded, you know, together to make it through these type of situations. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, as far as people saying it may have been too personal, I look at it like, what if your favorite artist, that song, or your favorite musician, they had a song that really gets you you through something, to really get you through a tough time in your life, we all resonate with pain and trauma. We've all gone through it. But what if that person didn't put that into a specific song for you to get through your storm? Mm-hmm. What if they didn't do that? So I look at it like that. Like there are marriages, there are families, there are even single people that are really having a tough time right now in this country with the economy with this election stuff coming up, with everything going on, people are afraid. And you have the media pumping out more fear every day, more and more fear every day of whatever 
is going to happen. Mm -hmm. So you need, you would like somebody to be like, hey, man, it's going to be okay. Stay grounded. Stay cool. It's not perfect. But we're going to make it through. It's going to be fine. Yeah. Like, you need that. In the midst of it all, you need somebody that's going to be like, okay, man, I, I got you. We're going to walk this walk together. Mm -hmm. So we get it. We love y'all. We know that, you know, it's nothing... It's nothing malicious coming from people saying, oh, that's too much. I wouldn't have done that. That's cool. That just means you would have ran through your storm by yourself. Alone. And that's the scary place to be. And most likely you, you won't come out of that without somebody to show you how to get out. Like, we've shown you how to get into that. Now we want to show you how to get out. Mm -hmm. We've shown people how to, like I said, get high limits. Even show you how to clean up your credit report. Yeah. How to... Uh, maintain your credit, the importance of it to either start a business or just to have in for emergencies. Mm -hmm. Like we've shown you all of that. We've taught people, we've taught couples, we've taught, you know, students, whether they're in high school, whether they're in college, we've spoken at universities, we everywhere. We've, we've, we've taught people how to do these things. Mm -hmm. So now we're in a situation where, all right, we were transparent about that. All right, so where y'all been? So now we have to be transparent about what's been going on and what we've been through. This is what we've been through because we can't stop. And we went from having 800 credit scores to our credit scores being in the threes and 400s. Um, like, and to have that happen when we pushed so much about how important credit is. I've never had a score that low in the 400s. Like, never in my life has my credit score been in the 400s. And we didn't, like, once it got to the point where we could not pay this stuff back, we didn't even want to look at our credit. It, like, it we would still there. get alerts. You know, we would still get alerts because we, we, we've always had it. But just taking a look at it, it was like, who I know what's in the toilet. <laughs> I know what's in the toilet. And the funny thing is, after we filed the Chapter 13, the next day, I got an alert from Wallet Hub. And it was like, your credit score has increased 249 points. And so I logged in, and my credit score went from a 4 something to a 695 just by filing mm -hmm. and usually your credit score is going to go down but i guess it pro probably couldn't go down anymore <laughs> so it was like ooh, it went up and i was like okay it was like you're seven points away from 700 and like all of those accounts they they just like they they fell off ooh, and i was like man so this is a way to start because we know how to rebuild it like yeah. we've always said that mm -hmm. this was not my first time filing bankruptcies my husband's first time filing bankruptcy i'm sorry mm -hmm. um but <laughs> this was not my first time filing bankruptcy so i i know just the same stuff that we preached it can always be rebuilt mm -hmm. it can always be rebuilt so being able to work through that and 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 show you guys that in real time is like I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that journey and the journey with the things that we're going to accomplish. Like I'm really, really looking forward to that. Yeah, I am too. I am too. I'm looking f well within that, what you just stated, we also had to go through like a credit counseling yeah. course. Two of them, I believe. Went through two of them and they were really, really helpful. They were. You know, we knew a lot about it like you say, we kind of just were so focused on what was happening in the moment that you don't really focus on what you used to do because it's just, it's there. Like you say, we didn't check nothing. Her score went up. Mine didn't go up that much. <laughs> My man went from a three to a three thirty. I don't know. It did not. <laughs> it went up. It didn't go up as high as mine. No, but it, it did. But, it did go up. But the courses, the courses were very helpful. It was a lot of dope information. Like a lot of it that we implemented, which is getting us to the place that we we want to be. You know, like I said, we knew a lot, but obviously we didn't know enough. 
Mm-hmm. Like it's it's a lot we still have to learn about um just the operation of the credit, the money, the moving, the business, something that's going to be a, a, a vehicle for us to maintain the lifestyle that we want to lead. Mm-hmm. So we still figuring those things out. Is it going to be something with products, with digital products, or it, will it? Will we go back to teaching or coaching? I really want to put a lot of my energy into our YouTube channel and, and those type of things. But it has to be something to help us along the way, passively or semi-passively, to keep us going where we want to where we want to go. Mm. Uh, but yeah, this has been this experience has has been. It's been one because there's still a lot of emotional stuff that we haven't spoken about and conversations that we had. Yeah. It's, it's been deep. It's been deep. Um, but, yeah, getting back to being too personal. We know everything is built on perspective. You know, your life, you may view things differently than somebody else is going to view it mm-hmm. all the time. It's just hinges on your perspective. So some may deem it as, as too personal or we deem it as this is what's going to, one, help others go through their storm and their journey. And honestly, it helps us. It helped us. Like yeah. we, us telling this, we've been talking about telling this story for the longest. Like we've been talking and talking and talking and talking and talking about it. But once we, once we shared it and we've been discussing it, it helps us. And it's like a weight lifted. Yeah, it is. Because we were holding on to it and not telling anybody about it because you don't want people to know certain stuff. Yeah. Even though we are who we are and we have no issues at all being in front of this camera or in front of an audience talking to anybody. A lot of times you just don't want the information out there. Me anyway, I don't want to tell somebody something and it throws off my plan Mm -hmm. of what we're trying to do. So that'd be my thing. Like I, I don't want outside forces or energy to 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 just disrupt anything that we got going. So I no, we didn't say anything, but now to say something is like it's too much, but you still get people to be like, Y'all should have said something. Yeah. Which one is it gonna be? Yeah. You can't have it both ways. You should have said something, you shouldn't have said and you said too much. Look, this is us. This is where we are, this is who we are, this is how we rock. It's it's not something that most people share. True. You know, most people don't share financial. Oh, we know that problems. We know that. I mean, <clears throat> most people don't share financial wins. It just mm-hmm. depends. But like we said, we've we were already sharing things. Mm-hmm. I've already shared that I filed bankruptcy before. So, hey, now I'm filing it again. So, is it something that I, you know, wanted to do or planned or expected? No, it's not. I I didn't plan or expect to either of the times. It's just (laughs) that you never know what what circumstance you will be in like never Hmm. and you know sometimes people we can look at people and we can judge people and it reminded me of that story that i told not a story um i don't want to get off track but we can we can look at people's circumstances and judge them and say well i wouldn't say that or I can't imagine myself in foreclosure or whatever. And I remember when I was 21 years old, I worked for a foreclosure attorney. And it was like I loved the job. I did. Like I I would come in. I would stay late. I just loved that job. And and my, my job um, was when people's homes would go up for sale, like I had to track the – sale date because that homeowner would either have to file bankruptcy or they would have to bring me the check to reinstate the loan that was their only two options and i remember you know i used to feel compassionate for some of those people because they just found themselves in circumstances that 
they couldn't control but i'm young at the time so i remember thinking like how do you get behind on your more how do you get eight payments behind you know i'm like and then you want us to feel sorry for you and and then it's like 20 years later like i said i was 21 i'm 41 i find myself in foreclosure and I thought back to that time. It's like you you don't know. Mm-hmm. I didn't think, you know, during that time, like, I'm going to be in the same situation 20 years from now. <laughs> but I am. You know, so it's like I don't, I try not to judge people or misjudge people or the only thing about sharing this publicly is is we know that we have to be well aware that we're going to get some feedback that might not be so friendly mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. so just like we're sharing we've opened up people to share their own opinion mm-hmm. do we necessarily care no you know right. you <laughs> no can't. not really you can't. Uh, but there are people that love and support us, and we just try to keep our focus on on that. On that, because life goes on. Yep, life goes on. So let's. Um, <clears throat> I'm glad you brought that up. That you were actually working for a foreclosure company, and all of those things. Like those are the experiences that we're talking about. Like you are able to be on both sides of that. And see both sides. Like you saw the, well, how could that happen? To seeing, oh, this is how it happens. <laughs> this is what goes on. You know, I've always heard this saying, like, just keep living. Yeah. Just, just keep living. You'll find out. What's you? Just keep living. You know, it, it all depends on, like I said, your perspective. It hinges because you could still, you could have still, you could have been in denial at this point. You don't know. You don't know where life is going to take you. You just don't. And a lot of people do that. They judge or they end up in a situation to where oh, I don't want anybody to. And this that's your, that's your you could not let anybody know. That's every that's all on you. Mm-hmm. It's on you. But just keep living. Because at some point somebody's going to ask you for help in that situation and you could either one be like oh well i i don't know because you didn't really go through it with the intention of helping anybody else Mm -hmm. or you could be like oh well look this is how this happened you know abc if you do these things and implement them it'll help you along your way and that's all it is it's just us helping it's us helping but it, it it falls in um stands on your perspective of how you see things Mm -hmm. and how you see life but yeah i'm glad you 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 told that and had that experience because there's somebody out there right now that's working in that same office not that very same office but has that job at 21 22 it's like how could this happen how could you do that (laughs) and then y'all damn this how you know same thing with anything like I never thought I'd be 200 some pounds at 20 years old. Then I wake up 30 some 250. Like that's how it happened. It, mm-hmm. it happens like this by not taking care of yourself, mm-hmm. by not paying attention to the details. It can happen. It can happen. I wanted to bring up bankruptcy because you speak about it freely. Like you say, when you told me, "Hey baby, we might have to do this." I mean, we had a, we had a conversation in the garage. He was like, we might have to do this. And I was like, man, hell no, nah, I'm not filing. That's failure. I, I ain't I ain't showing people like I gave up and not understanding. This is just a tool. It is. It's just a tool. Yeah. Do you feel bad? Of course. But that's because you're emotionally tied to whatever it is that you need to let go. I was emotionally tied to that number, that that score, that credit score number. Mm-hmm. And that's what gets you in trouble. And and honestly, and I know better because of all the, the, the studying and all the conferences and everything we've been through, that number is arbitrary. It's only holding weight when you have the credit, you have the money, when you have certain things going for you. It's the only time really that number holds weight. If your credit profile is thin, but you got a high number, it don't mean nothing. 
Or if you have a high number and you got the credit, but you maxed out, but you're able to move some stuff around and make it look good, it's arbitrary. But me, I was just holding on to that number. My wife is like, look, we need to let this go. And it came to the point to where I finally had to, okay, I got to let this go and look at it from a different perspective. Mm-hmm. I had to change my perspective on bankruptcy and filing for it. I had to do that. Some of your favorite celebrities have done it time and time and time and time again. You love them because they have a talent, but not understanding what they go through in the background. There's <laughs> a lot of people out here messed up. Everybody don't have those million dollar contracts, millions of dollars on that paper that they sign in the bank. A lot of people don't have that. They just don't. So I had to change my perspective on it and look at it as just another a tool. This is the adverse tool to use, but you got to use it. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a it's a last resort. Yeah. Um, but I've never been embarrassed about filing bankruptcy. Yeah. Because the first time I did file, I was young. Uh, I was in my twenties, and I had maybe recently got divorced or it's probably a little prior to that. Um, but it taught me some things yeah. like it, it, it taught me the benefits. There are benefits to filing bankruptcy, whether it's chapter 13 or chapter seven, or you own a home or you own an asset that you want to keep or give away. It, it's just a tool. Mm-hmm. And, and once I recovered from that, and when I did get divorced and we had that house and I, I I let him have it, I set a goal that I was going to buy another house in two years. And I was able to do that. I was able to buy cars. I was able to, you know, so it. I never felt like it's the end of the world now. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I'm just older. You know what I mean? But. Mm-hmm. It's it's like it, if it gets to the point where you're you're seeing late payments or you're struggling, your credit score is going to drop anyway. Yep. So you might as well, if that's your last resort, if you cannot pay your way out, and we were in a situation where we we couldn't do it, mm-hmm. and I know that my husband held on to the hope of being able to do that, but I was thinking like even if we could. <laughs> I don't think you realize the magnitude of how long we were going to be taking to pay this stuff back. So yeah. it's like you just we just can't get into the situation again. So yeah. but yeah, it's it's a, it's nothing it's nothing embarrassing about it. No. Nah. You know? It's nah, nothing. It's, it's not. not and it's not a failure. I don't feel like um we're we're doomed. Did things fail that we attempted? Yeah, they mm-hmm. did. They did. Yeah, yeah. That comes along with again the life that you see for yourself mm-hmm. and your family. That's 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 all a part of that. You know, we shot our shot, and we're gonna keep shooting though. Like we missed <laughs> on those attempts, <laughs> but we're gonna keep shooting. You know, it's not over with. So right. that's just what it is. How do you, how do you see yourself? What life do you see for you? Um, because I see a life. It's already been a beautiful life. I don't want to make it seem like we want, but you can always want more. There's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with wanting more. There's nothing wrong with wanting to, to do more, become more, help more people, make more money, live in a different city, live in a different country, drive different cars, eat wonderful food, have the best health ever. Make sure your kids are straight. Their kids are straight. Their kids are straight. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's just going to take a lot of work. Mm -hmm. If you want unusual results, you have to be looked at or you have to become an unusual person. (laughs) You do. I heard Les Brown say that. You have to become an uncommon person. Mm Mm-hmm. You can't be like everybody else and expect Mm. all of these wonderful results for your life or stuff that you see in your imagination. You want to take flights to these remote islands or you want to just go 
do something just that you've always wanted to do in life. You don't get that without stepping out and taking a risk. Mm -hmm. You don't get that without being looked at as weird or strange or what they doing? Why would he do that? Why would he leave that job? Why was why, why are you going there? Why what what are you doing all this for? It's not for y'all to understand. It's not for anybody to understand your vision. It's not. But they will understand the results of it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to understand my reasons. Just understand the results. And you will see why. Like it's a lot of stuff, or a lot of things that we've gone through that have reasons to them that people ain't going to understand. There's a lot of stuff that y'all go through on a daily that people just ain't going to understand. It's not for them to. It's for you to keep going. And that's that's where we are at this moment. Yeah. It's still things that we want, and they haven't changed. The goals haven't changed. You just have to reassess your game plan. That's all. It's just a reassessment. Exactly. I've been smelling. Your hair smells amazing. I've been smelling it this whole episode. Oh, it I've does. been trying not to lean over. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Like my little curl treatment I did. I'm like, mm. Mm. All right, guys. We're going to go <laughs> ahead and wrap this up. We want to table this discussion. Table it. No, but we are, we are going to wrap this up. Um, and we will see you guys on the next episode. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you enjoyed this. This is part two of the House of Cards series from first class to foreclosure. Yes. So this is the update. <laughs> this is the update. We wanted to update y'all again. We want to thank everybody that has sent out, you know, love, prayer, support. Those of you have reached yeah. out, DMs, called. We love y'all. Thank y'all for everything. You thank know, even you. before now, thank you for any product you have purchased, any class you attended, any Zoom you've attended, whatever it may be. We thank every one of y'all for y'all support. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Common Sense Couple, out. Bye. <laughs>